I'd like to introduce you to CoffeeScript. CoffeeScript is a little language that compiles to JavaScript and uh, it compiles fairly straightforwardly to JavaScript and is really quite simple. Um, first, I should explain why I'm introducing it. Well, the, the biggest reason, of course, is that it's an example of a language that compiles to JavaScript and we can have a look at it. Um, but I'd also like to suggest that uh, if you're new to JavaScript, we did introduce JavaScript a, a, a few weeks ago, um, but if you're new to JavaScript and you're also a student that's found themselves needing to catch up their Java skills in the first half of the course, perhaps because your programming experience was some years ago originally, um, CoffeeScript might help you to learn both CoffeeScript and JavaScript. Um, JavaScript as a language has some interesting wrinkles in it um, and CoffeeScript can help you to handle some of those quirks. Um, the easiest way to learn it is from its homepage on coffeescript.org where there's a one page description of the whole language and a live translating try it out tool. Um, that said, it is a fairly large page. It's a fairly long page, um, but you'll see that it's all documented by example with the, um, the CoffeeScript on the left and the JavaScript that that translates to on the right and you can run it from the page and it's also, if you click this Try Coffee Scripts up here, uh, that is uh, live translating the Coffee Script on the left to the JavaScript on the right that quickly. So you can see it uh, pasting it as we go. Now, having said that this is the easiest way to learn it, I do have some slides to explain a few things about it. So the first thing to mention is in JavaScript, we use lots of functions and JavaScript has a fairly verbose uh, syntax for that. Function, my function of argument, open curly brace, etc. Um, coffee script functions are a bit shorter and they look a little bit like Java 8 lambdas um, if you've used those. Uh, so here we have the, uh, the argument in brackets and then this arrow notation and then the body of the function. And you'll see this line looks like a variable assignment because it is. In JavaScript uh, functions can be data that we can pass around and we can assign into variables. Um, so this looks like a variable assignment because it is. Uh, so let's copy that and let's paste this over here and show the JavaScript that turns into. So it turns into declaration of the my function variable and then setting it to be this particular function. Uh, but that's a, a few lines shorter. The next thing to say is um, like Python, if you've used Python before, uh, CoffeeScript uses indentation instead of curly braces for uh, for some of its scoping. Uh, so here, I've declared my function. I've said it takes this argument called arg, and these two lines here are because they're indented. They're part of the function. But this one that's not indented, this one that's you know outdented from those, uh, that's no longer part of the function. So if I copy that one across you should see that, sure enough, even without the blank line between them, those top two lines become part of the function, but this bottom one does not. Objects in CoffeeScript, if you find yourself wanting to, de to declare them, well, though they look very, very similar to um, declaring them in JavaScript. Um, so, there's the coffee script on the left and on the right. And okay, that one's got a few more new lines in it. Um, but uh, generally speaking, th th those look pretty similar. Uh, but you can, if you want, replace the curly braces with indentation. So you can do this notation, seeing as equals indented. And so this is, um, this is creating an object with the, the key Jagger mapped to rock and the key Elvis mapped to roll. And so if we paste that in, you should see that generates exactly the same JavaScript. Next thing to mention about it is CoffeeScript is expression oriented. Uh, in Java, not everything has a particular type. You can't really assign an if into a variable. There's a ternary um, expression that we'll see that you can. But in CoffeeScript, uh, it's expression oriented. Almost everything you write has a, has a type and can be assigned into something. So in this case, we've got location equals and we're giving it an if statement as the expression. And if we copy this one across, we'll see that in this case, this uh, translates into this ternary expression that's in JavaScript and is also in Java. Um, but again, we could use the 
indentation. Uh, in this case, instead of the then, we could go like so, and we'd see it would generate exactly the same on the JavaScript side. For loops, however, they're a little bit different. So I'm going to copy this across to show you what I mean about not having a C style for loop. Um, so loops in CoffeeScript tend to be across ranges, A for A in, and here's this range, or A in an array. And in this case, it is generating a, what we call a, a C style or a Java style for loop. Um, but that, that style of for loop isn't legal syntax in CoffeeScript. If you wanted to do something that was a bit like a, uh, a C style for loop, then generally speaking, you'd uh, in CoffeeScript, you'd use a, a while loop. While i is less than or equal to 10. And uh, let's not worry about what we're doing in there, but do something inside the loop. Uh, hash incidentally is the, 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 uh, the comment, the, the, the equivalent of Java and JavaScript slash slash. So for more detail on the language itself, I'm going to suggest having a look through the examples on copyscript.org and trying it out. Uh, the next thing I want to move on to showing you is how it integrates with Play Framework. Um, so Play Framework uh, uses SBT as the build tool and SBT Web is the main plugin that kind of brings in various other ones. And sure enough, one of the plugins is for the CopyScript compiler. So if we, and apologies, there's a typo here. Um, if we add the plugin in project slash plugins sbt dot sbt not not conf plugins project plugins dot sbt um, that will bring in the coffee script compiler which will automatically activate and it will spot whenever we have dot start something or other dot coffee files under app assets javascripts and it'll turn them compile them into javascript files so in here is a project and this is the tutorial from just before the break, the, the one that I suggested having a look um, at over the break that uh, that does the XML HTTP request down to the server. I've edited a little bit, but so you'll see in here that I'm including XHR example.js, but up here I've got XHR example.coffee. And so this is my coffee script. And in project plugins.sbt, uh, I have up here already the CoffeeScript plugin included. And so now if I pop across to Firefox and I, I load this page, there it is. And there is the compiled JavaScript it's producing. And you'll see, for instance, that it, it's done this pattern that I mentioned back in the, the JavaScript uh, lecture where um, to avoid polluting the global namespace, people often put things inside an anonymous function and then immediately call it. And CoffeeScript does that for you. Um, but if we look down the bottom, we'll also notice here's this comment to say that there is a source map for this. And so this means that here I am looking at, uh, actually in this case, some reasonable looking JavaScript that it's generated. Uh, but I could, if I wanted, go over to settings tick show original sources and now I've got xhr example.coffee on the left and Java, uh, and the browser will go and fetch the source for me and I can even put a breakpoint into my coffee script um, so let's breakpoint the line where it creates the xml http request and that's going to get triggered after I press this button to call it and so now I break put a breakpoint and I'm at a breakpoint on a line of coffee script and I can step through my coffee script even though the browser doesn't have a copy script parser in it the browser's only got a JavaScript uh, parser in it so this is using the source maps that we mentioned in the previous lecture that the browser sure enough is executing the, the the JavaScript and then using the source map to work out well where am I in the coffee script then if we go back to IntelliJ uh, we can also have a look in here at the JavaScript that it's developed so if we go into target and then into web 
and then into CoffeeScript. Uh, we can see there is the JavaScript that it's generated and we can also see this is what the source map that it's generated looks like.